Hi everybody, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. I did um, a pour the other day with blues and purples and I blew a lot of the paint off the canvas. So I had a lot of paint just left on my work surface. So I've scraped it up and I've got this really beautiful bluey purpley colour. So Dutch pour consistency paint. So I'm going to use that as the base for a Dutch pour today. I'm going to keep it simple. So a blue base, I'm going to add some white, some gold and maybe another pink and another purple on top. I just create hopefully quite a nice um, elegant Dutch pour with the with the leftovers. Um, so let me show you the colour. These are the colours I'm going to use. I've already changed my mind. I've taken out the gold. I've added silver, Pebio Studio Acrylic Silver. Um, and I've also added in some dark blue, the Prussian blue by De La Rani, which was in the original pour that resulted in this colour. So it's absolutely beautiful. It's sparkly. I think you could probably see that because of the metallics. It's it's reasonably pale, but it's definitely got a sort of purpley tinge to it. A really, really pretty colour. So that's my base colour. Or oh, you can see the consistency. There's no mound. There's no real trace. Mixed with flood flow and troll and water. I'll put the recipe in the description. Um, and then the other three colours I'm using, I've got um, Permanent Blue Violet by Amsterdam. I've got Persian Rose by Amsterdam and Titanium White by Amsterdam. I'm using a 40 centimetre canvas. So I'm going to first of all put the base coat down. So I'm just going to pour some paint into the centre and then I'm going to blow that out using the hairdryer. Now I'm on the lookout for any lumps because the downside, I think I can see one there, the downside of, I find, of scraping my worktop, and I use paper, but um, the downside of scraping it is sometimes if the paper gets very soggy, it rips. So sometimes I get a little bit of um, paper or dirt or anything on the surface in my paint. So as I blow this out, I'm gonna really be looking for any, for any lumps. So one thing I just thought of, which may be really obvious, is what I could have done is actually just sieved my paint first, strained it, um, and that would have taken away the lumps. That would have been a really good idea. I've got a bit left still, so if I use that for another pour, I think that's what I will do. This colour is absolutely beautiful. It is, I, I just absolutely love it. I've never seen a colour quite like this before. It's so pretty. It'll be really interesting to see how this looks when it when it dries because it will obviously go a bit darker. Really pretty. And it looks really quite opaque as well because I can't really see the edges of the canvas through. So that's good. Um, another little hint, um, tip, always keep some paint spare, especially with a colour like this, which I can't ever repeat, because if I need to touch up any of the edges afterwards, I've got some there ready to use. Right, now I'm half thinking, should I actually include the purple in this? Because this blue is so pretty, would it spoil it with the purple? I'm not sure, I'm really not sure. So I'm just thinking through, I think I'd like it to be quite neutral looking. Um, so I might even have the white on top. Um, I'm just, I've got my colours here and I'm just, I'm just trying to, to decide on the order. Okay, I'm going to start with silver. So for this piece, I'm going to pull the paints on diagonally. So from one corner to the other, they won't be particularly straight lines. I'm going to make them a bit wiggly. See, just those two colours. Wow, blue and silver. So I'm going to go with my purple because that was my initial, my initial plan. And then the pale pink. The Prussian blue. And then the white. 
right now what do i think is that enough color right so to blow this out i'm going to start in the center <clears throat> and i'm going to try and create almost like a twist in the center so i'm going to blow the i'm going to blow up this way and then i'll stop and then come and blow round down this way wow that is so so simple there was so much negative space i'm going to play around a little bit because this chunk is a lot bigger than this chunk but it is so simple and so elegant with oh i really like it with such a simple there's a definite twist there in the middle i'm just going to blow around a little bit around some of these edges especially down on this bottom section So I can't really make this section any bigger. What I'm going to actually try and do is make this section smaller. So if I put a little bit of the blue on here, I'll be able to blow black back towards the design and push it back inwards. Now, I might regret this, but I still feel like I'm missing some here. And if you look here, I've got really dark blue with that silver. So I'm just wondering about adding some more. There's a massive risk that I will ruin it. But that that annoys me. I've almost got a right angle there. I'm just going to try adding just a little tiny bit more. I am really pretty excited. This painting is so unlike anything I would normally do. I don't, as a rule, like negative space. And yet I don't think I've ever had a pour with so much negative space, but it's beautiful. This colour is absolutely stunning. Um, and I'm so happy with the colours that I've used to complement it. I'm so glad I added the purple, but also really glad I've added that dark blue as well. And the silver, gold would have looked awful so it'd be really happy so really really simple blowout design of paint but if you look actually at the details they're not simple at all because the entire painting is absolutely jam-packed with cells and lacing there are really no actual solid blocks of color apart from right in the center you've got that that dark blue and a bit of white there but every other every other speck of paint is mixed with another colour, with it with just lots of tiny little details. It's so, so pretty. Love these little fluted edges, so they are untouched. That is exactly how it was when the, when the hairdryer blew it out. I've interfered a little bit up here to try and change the shape slightly, and it's not quite as neat, but there, just beautiful. And also down here, just so choppy, really, really like that. And I'm just so happy that I managed to get the two the two corners more or less the same size 
you can't really see with the perspective of this this foam but they're much more similar now um, so really over the moon with this really excited to see how this dries so it's now dry it's dried so well i'm so happy with it this color is absolutely stunning it's just i, I don't think i could ever ever remix that it's such a pretty color um you've got the twist really love the twist so it really looks like maybe like a ribbon or a rope that's twisted in the center and then just flares out at each end um, the cells are beautiful you've got some really little pink cells there tiny cells lots of lacing um, and then you've got the real darkness and the depth there in the center and can you see there how it just the color just blends and it just flows the blue flows into the other colors lots of silver cells there let me just show you because you can really still the see the silver when I move it around yeah, so, so happy. Let me know what you think. Um, it's very simple. It's so much negative space, which is really unusual for my type of painting. So let me know what you think. Does, do you think it works? Is there too much negative space? Oh, and the little ripples. Love those little ripples. Great. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit the thumbs up button if you like it. Have a good weekend. Bye.